Hello there and welcome back to RC Model Reviews from the Binch. I know a lot of people out there are waiting for the RC Model Reviews Diversity Controller Project and trust me I've put a lot of hours into this. It is a fairly sophisticated product. It's got a microcontroller, a little tiny computer in it which does all the hard work of choosing which um, receiver to use and, and lots of other clever stuff behind the scenes. So that requires software and I've developed the software but um, obviously if you buy the chip, the microcontroller chip, you have to program it and not everyone has a programmer. So I bought a whole lot of chips which I'll be programming up and making available to people that want it. And then again it goes on a circuit board and again if you want to build it you have to get a circuit board. Now you can etch your own if you've got the gear or you'll be able to buy them from hopefully from some of the open source um, or the, the board um, fabrication shops that support open source because it'll be open source so you better go there and buy it. But, what if you just want something really quick and easy and dirty where you don't have to buy all this custom stuff like the PC board and the pre-programmed microcontroller? What if you just want to solder a few bits together and have a diversity controller? Well, I thought, well, why don't I do a really simple one just to, you know, as an interim project till I get this other thing finished for you, the other videos done. So that's what I'm going to do today. Now, it's actually an incredibly simple diversity controller. It has limitations, obviously, but anyone, pretty much anyone who can solder or if you're in America, if you can solder, same thing, you could put this together, probably do it in an evening, and it'll give you a diversity controller using bits you can buy at any electronics store. I know you can go to DigiKey or Mouse or whatever, but if you're in New Zealand, there's places like JK, you can just walk in the front door, pick a couple of bits up, put them in a bag, take them to the counter, walk out, and have a diversity controller going that evening. So there you go. That's what I'm going to do in this video, show you how to build your own really simple, or uber simple, diversity controller. So let's have a look at the design process. I'm, I'll show you how it works because if you don't understand how it works, you're probably going to have less success in making yours work. So let's have a look. We'll start with the design. So here we are at the whiteboard again and I'm going to walk you through how this circuit works. It might look a little bit complicated here, but really it is so damn simple. It really is. All we've really got is two chips. Now these, you see there's four things on here, but each chip contains multiple bits. So you don't need, you only need one of the chips that has these bits and one of the chips that has these bits. So that's two chips, that's all you need. And you're only half using them, to be honest. But I mean, if, you know, who cares if you don't use the other half, that's so cheap. But what we've got here with our uber simple diversity controller is two chips. One is an LM324, the other one is a CD4066. Now, we'll start with this one. This is just like an electronic relay, it's like a solid state relay. It's all it does, it just switches off and on, easy peasy. And of course you've got an input and an output and then a, a controlling signal which determines whether the switch is open or closed. If this voltage here is zero volts, then the switch will be open so the input won't be connected to the output. However, if you raise that voltage, then when you put the voltage to positive, the switch will close. So suddenly it'll be like there was a permanent wire through there, wire through there, the relay was closed. It conducts the signal through there, simple. So this is what we use to switch our video. We have two inputs, we have one from receiver 2 and one from receiver 1. And each input goes to a different switch and the outputs are tied together because we always want them going to the same place which will be our goggles or our LCD screen. Um, but then we just need to control them accordingly and switch them so that it chooses the receiver that has the strongest signal. And how's it going to know? Simple as. We have a thing called RSSI, Received Signal Strength Indicator. That's just a voltage. And with the case of the little 5.8 gigahertz modules I'm using, in which appear in the RC305 receivers, the more signal you get, the higher the voltage. So it's pretty easy to tell which receiver's got the best signal because a higher voltage will come out of the RSSI pin. And that's what we do. So we bring this RSSI voltage in here to the LM324. Now, the 324 is what we call an op amp, an operational amplifier. Ooh, complicated, horrible big words. Um, but in this mode, we're actually using it as something else. Another big word called a comparator. Now, Comparator, as its name implies, it just compares things. Just You put two voltages in, and it compares them, and it chooses the one, well, basically, depending on which voltage is what, the output will go either up or down. And what we want to do, of course, is choose the highest voltage out of the receivers, so that we know which receiver is highest. The one with the highest voltage is the one that should then have its switch closed to send the, volt, the, the signal, video signal through to your glasses or your screen. So what happens here is, um, in this case, here's number one, number two, Let's say receiver number one has a higher voltage, then with the comparator, if the plus signal is higher than the minus signal, then the voltage on the output here will go up, it'll go positive, right? Simple as so. If receiver RSSI number one is higher than number two, then this will go positive. And when it goes positive, what happens? It's connected to the control on the switch. So that will switch the video from number one through to our video glasses. Simple as that. Ah, but what happens? Of course, we also have to turn this switch off, make sure this is off. So we take the output 
of this, which has got a positive voltage, and we feed it into another comparator. And what happens there is, this is actually, you notice there's a couple of resistors here. These are set at half the normal voltage. So if this voltage is high, if this has got positive on it, then it'll go through here and it's on the negative. So if this is high, it'll make this go low because negative reverses it, negates it, it's minus, you know, so, so it turns it to the reverse sign. So if we've got plus there, we'll have minus here, which means it goes off here and it turns off that switch. So only the video from the first receiver will go through to our video glasses or our screen. Okay, fine. Now we're flying along suddenly, things change and receiver number two has the strongest signal. What happens? Well, that's easy peasy too. We come over here to our RSSI, suddenly now the negative is higher than the positive. What would you do? Well, in that case, this voltage goes down to zero because it's only plus when the plus is higher than the minus. Now we've got a minus higher than a plus. This has got more voltage on it than that. So this goes to zero volts, which means this switch turns off. So suddenly receiver number one is no longer connected to the video glasses. And of course, because this one here goes through an inverting amplifier, because we now have zero on here, we'll have plus on here. So this will go plus, and of course because it's on the control input here and it's plus, this switch will close. So now the signal from receiver two will go through to our glasses because the voltage from receiver two was higher. That's all it is. It's really that simple. So what have we got? We've got one integrated circuit here, the CC CD4016. There, that's one component. We've got the LM324 here. It's another component. We've got two resistors here and two resistors there. And really, what does that make? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six components. That's all it takes to make a really good diversity controller. Now, I've got it all breadboarded up. It's all finished. We'll go and look at the bench. We'll have a look, see if it actually does work as it should do according to this schematic diagram I've done here. Let's see if theory turns into practice. And if it does, how well does it work? Let's go over and have a look. Here's our little breadboard. Now, if you, if you like messing around with electronics, you can buy these little breadboards. They're cheap as beans. And they allow you to sort of knock up a circuit really quickly without soldering, without too much farting around. You just plug your components into these little holes, run some wires to join them all up. And, and before you can say Bob's your uncle, you've got a working circuit. Now, what I've got here, as we saw on the whiteboard, is I've got two integrated circuits. One of them, this one here, is the op amp, or the quad op amp, it's a LM324. It's a really cheap part, you can buy these just a few cents, and they're really, everyone should have these in stock. Over here we've got our 4066, which is a CMOS switch. Now fancy, it's just like a relay, but it's a, it's a um, solid state thing. You don't, it doesn't have little moving bits and contacts and things. It's all done solid state inside there. That's what's going to switch our video. This is what's going to decide which receiver we should be looking at. Now, for the purposes of this test, I've put a little LED in here, two LEDs. They represent one receiver and the other receiver. And you see at the moment, we've got the yellow LED is on. Uh, but I've got a setup here where I can change the voltage because instead of connecting up two receivers, just for testing, I've put in two potentiometers here. Now they can vary the voltage going into our op amp, which is acting as a comparator, as I said. So what happens is we can change the voltages. We can make it look as if one receiver is getting more signal than the other. So what I'll do is I'll just put my little screwdriver on this pot here. And when I turn this, when I get to a voltage, there we go, see that LED? It's going backwards and forwards. So that's the equivalent of one receiver getting more signal than the other. At the moment, the yellow receiver's got more signal, but when the voltage from the red receiver changes, oh, there you go, the red receiver will be switched in and that will be the one you're looking at the FPV camera through. So there you go, just a tiny little change in voltage produces this switching action between the two inputs. And of course, the voltage that's driving these LEDs is connecting to this electronic switch here. So when the yellow LED's on, one of the inputs will be switched through to the output to your goggles or your LCD screen. When the red LED's on, the other input will be switched through. So I've tested this now. What I'm going to do actually, I haven't fully tested it. I've just got the comparator part working this to putting the output out to select the switch. What I'm going to do now is wire up the switch and I'm going to put a signal on and we'll see whether it actually switches. We'll use the oscilloscope to see if the switch is actually going to switch our signal. So now we have a bit more technology on the bench. Here's our little breadboard. Ignore this bit out here. I just use it for other pieces. Here's our little uh, breadboard and we've got our setup here. This is a signal generator. It's generating a a signal which we're going to pass through or see if our, use it to test our switching, see if our switch is going to work. So 
At the moment you'll see this, I'll just go over here to our oscilloscope, maybe I can get them both in shot, I might have to bank pan out a bit here to get this all in shot, here we go. So, try and get it as much in as I can. Here's our oscilloscope, you'll notice on the oscilloscope, this yellow line, it's pretty much flat because at the moment our switch is looking at what would be the other receiver. Now I'm going to adjust the voltage here to switch on the signal. Now you should see at some stage here, the LED will change over and the screen on the oscilloscope will show a pattern. There we go. So now it's switched through to the red source, which is this signal generator over here. So you can see the signal generator signal is passing through. When I go back, it goes to the yellow, then it switches to the other input, which at the moment has just got nothing on it. So you can see our switching is working. It's switching to and from the different inputs that we've got being receiver one, receiver two. So this is all working just as I'd hoped it would. Um, a very small change in voltage because these little potentiometers here are actually about 10 turns from one end to the other. So I'm only changing by a minuscule amount. In fact, I'm gonna put the meter on here and just see how many volts or how few volts are actually changing. So let's bring the meter into shot a bit here. Turn it on. So you can see the amount of voltage that changes just to get this effect. Okay, so at the moment, we're, you can see we've got 2.43, I hope that's going to show up on the camera, it's hard to tell, there's lots of reflections in here, and I'm going to adjust this, Ooh, here we go, get this screwdriver in here, um, okay, so we're on 2.8, and it switches it, oh sorry, go back to there, 2.39, oh, and there we go, it switched at 2.4, so 2.408, 3.9 so yeah the difference is like mm, you work it out for yourself it's a really tiny change in voltage produces this switching effect so this will be able to choose whichever receiver is giving the most voltage or the most signal based on the voltage of the RSSI so that's what we have to do now we, we may have to make some changes when we try this out with receivers because we don't want it sort of I'll show you see if I can show you if I get this right on the threshold of both receivers are picking up almost identical levels of signal then you might end up with a whole lot of noise appearing on the just get it right on the borderline here. Oh. No, it's not going to do it. It's switching backwards and forwards so accurately. But it's possible in, re in real use that it may actually cause a little bit of oscillation or a little bit of noise. So we're going from, let's just try that again. Here we go. Well, there it is, just happening now. If you look on the oscilloscope, and the LEDs are both flashing, it's because we've got exactly the same voltage on both, but the difference was so little that even my meter was enough to offset it so yeah I don't think that's going to be a problem ignore it just forget what I said <laughs> now now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up some real receivers to this little board here and we'll and we'll put a video signal through and we'll see if it actually switches okay so here we are we've got the diversity controller the simple super simple analog diversity controller on the bench here I've actually turned the lights down so you can see the screen a bit better and you can see the LEDs changing now there's nothing happening at the moment because I don't have the FPV transmitter on uh, but I'll plug it in, plug in the FPV backpack and hopefully we'll get a picture. Here we go, look at that. Ooh, it's not very good in here because we're inside a building and we've got all sorts of reflections and things. But you can see we have a picture. Now, I'll bring the antenna of the uh, thing close to the, each of these receivers so it'll, it'll change. You should be able to get a change in, um, in, there we go, where are we? You can see now this is changing backwards and forwards, but see the... The, the picture remains unaltered, even though I'm changing from one receiver to another, the diversity controller is switching as I move closer to one antenna than the other, because down here I've got two receivers, I've got this one here which is just a little board, just the standard little module, and over here I've got one of the RC305s I think they are. So um, they both use the same module, so what's happening is as I move this, I'll just go out a bit so I can get a bit more of the scene here, well, look at the messy bench, oh, I have to do something about that, but you can see that as I move closer to this one, we get well, this one is the red light. No, what is it? this one is, yeah, that's the red one. This is the yellow one. So, here we go. You can see the lights changing. You can see the picture. It says unchanged. Isn't that brilliant? So good. It's a bit much colour in that picture, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, so there, that diversity controller is working just fine. There's not even any really noticeable flickering on the image when it changes over. So, what I have to do now, of course, is build it up dead bug style. And what's that? Well, I'll show you. Okay, so here's the bill of materials, the list of parts you'll need to build your own uber simple diversity controller. We've got the two chips, I've already mentioned an LM324 and a CD4066. Now there are also four resistors and there's basically two different values, 4.7k ohms and 47k ohms. Now 
you know, they're pretty common values. You shouldn't have any trouble finding those. And they're not that critical, to be honest. This could be anywhere from 3.3K ohms to 10K ohms. And this could be anywhere from, oh, I don't know, um, say 33K ohms to 100K ohms. So, yeah, these are preferred values. But you can go either way. Go outside those a little bit if you need to, if you can't get the bits that I've specified here. That's really it. So simple. But if you want to build a deluxe version, you can add four other components, like these two LEDs there, yeah, red one and a yellow one, or any colours you like, and two extra resistors. These ones I think are 330 ohms, and that will just give you those little lights we had on the breadboard there, so you can see which channel is active, which receiver is actually being used at any given time. It's quite handy because you'll also be able to see, obviously, if the power is turned on, and you'll be able to make sure your diversity controller is actually switching as it should. So yeah, I recommend these extra components, but they're not essential to the operation of the device. There are, of course, a few other things you might also want. You'll need some solder, and don't use any of that hippie lead-free solder. That's a complete waste of time and money. Just get the good old-fashioned loaded with lead solder. This one is 60% tin and 40% lead. That gotta love the taste of that lead. Um, you'll need a piece of circuit board. This is a piece of double-sided circuit board, or you can just actually get an old bean tin and cut a section like that out of the bean tin. It just has to be something you can solder to that will provide support for the components and also be electrically conductive. So I say I've used double-sided fiberglass circuit board, but um, a piece of uh, metal shim or baked bean tin or something like that would just be as good. And you need, of course, a couple of tools, you need some pliers and some side cutters so you can cut the lengths of the components to size. And here's a little plastic box. This is an old high-tech servo box. It's nice to have these things in a box so they don't get bumped and banged and the wires don't get twisted and broken and short out. So any old box will do. And you can make the size of your board, you know, suitable to fit inside the box. So there, there's just stuff you've probably got lying around already. And you'll need a soldering iron to melt this stuff, of course. And uh, any soldering iron will do. And you obviously need a little bit of skill just to stick stuff together with your soldering arm. You'll also need some cables, of course, and that depends on how your FPV system set up. You can have the, you know, long cables or the, um, the with the RCA connectors or just hardwire it, whatever you want to do, I'll leave that bit up to you. So without further ado, let's get on to building ourselves a dead bug. <laughs> 